Welcome everyone to I Didn't Know Adobe Acrobat Pro DC Could Do That. Thanks so much for joining us today for TechSoup's webinar. Before we get started with the content at hand, I'd like to make sure everyone is comfortable using ReadyTalk, the webinar platform we are using today. You can chat into us at any time if you need help, if you experience technical difficulties, or if you have questions for me or our presenter using the box on the lower left side of your screen. We will keep all lines muted so we get a nice clear recording for you today. You can refer to it later, share it with your friends and colleagues, or watch it again. Most of you are hearing the audio play through your computer speakers. So if you are hearing an echo, it may mean that you are logged in more than once and will need to close additional instances of ReadyTalk. If at any time you have trouble with the streaming audio, feel free to dial into that toll-free number that Susan chatted out into the chat window for you. Slides and audio sometimes fall out of sync uh, depending on your bandwidth. So you can use that alternate phone line to dial in by phone or Skype at your convenience. If you lose your Internet connection, please rejoin by clicking the green Join Meeting button in your reminder or confirmation email. You can reach out to ReadyTalk for support at that 800 number. But I want to let everyone know that we are recording today's session, and you'll be able to find it again on our YouTube channel and on TechSoup's website. So you can find these links later in the follow-up email. Within a few days, you will get that email that has the full recording, the links that we discussed today, and the PowerPoint presentation. If you've just registered, you also can find the PowerPoint slides on the right side of your email under the downloadable files. For those of you who got a reminder an hour ago, you also should be able to access those slides in that downloadable files link. Just know that today's webinar will include a portion that's live demonstration. So those slides won't encompass everything we're covering today, but they are a good resource for you to refer to and look at, take notes from, and click on the link since you're not able to do that from live on ReadyTalk. If you'd like to tweet about today's event, you can do so at TechSoup or using the hashtag TSWebinars. My name is Becky Wiegand, and I am the Webinar Program Manager here at TechSoup, and I'm happy to be your host for today's event. I'm joined by Jim Babbage, who is the senior oh, – sorry, I got his title wrong already. Sorry about that – who is an Adobe Senior Solutions consultant for the education team out of Canada. And his passion to share the knowledge and take photos, manipulate images, led him to a long-lasting career in those areas as a college professor and as a creative professional. He's the author of several books and videos on and training around Adobe Fireworks. He's written hundreds of articles on Fireworks, Dreamweaver, Photoshop, Lightroom. So he is a real Adobe Pro. He has spoken at Adobe Max, Appaloosa, and D2WC. He is a Senior Solutions Consultant for Adobe supporting the Canadian and American Educational Sales Team. So he primarily focuses on supporting these tools for educators, which I know that's slightly different from our nonprofit and library audience, but he really is an expert on these technologies. So we're really happy to have him joining us today. On the back end, you'll see Terry McGrath joining us from Adobe. You'll see Wes White and Susan Hope Bard both joining us from TechSoup. So they'll be on hand to help answer your questions throughout the webinar. Looking at our objectives today, I have just a couple here that we're hoping that you'll come away at the end of this webinar being able to distinguish at least two new things that you did not know already that Adobe Acrobat Pro DC could do. We also hope that you'll understand the donated and discounted membership options for accessing Adobe Acrobat. So we want you to know what your options are. Before we begin with the content at hand, a little bit about TechSoup. We are everywhere on this map that is blue where we are working to build a dynamic bridge to help connect civil society organizations to the resources they need to create a more equitable planet. Go ahead and chat in to let us know from where you are joining us on the map. We have around almost 300 people in the room right now. And I know you are coming from all over the place. If you are joining us from outside the United States, like I just saw somebody who typed in New Zealand, and thanks for joining us in the middle of the night. Um, we recommend you visiting uh, TechSoup.Global and select your country from the drop-down so that you are getting donations for your region or country. The donation programs we'll talk about later on in the program are specifically uh, through the TechSoup.org website which is targeting U.S.-based organizations, nonprofits, and libraries. 
So if you are not from, those, uh, from the U.S., we recommend again checking out what's available through the donation program in your country. I'll do a little bit about this at the end, but I just want to show quickly so those of you who have questions about Adobe Acrobat can see the different options available. Uh, and then we'll get into the details and the nuts and bolts of what Adobe Acrobat Pro can do. But through TechSoup's program with Adobe, there are a variety of options. Adobe Acrobat Pro DC one-year membership, that's for individual license. Uh, access to discounted rates. You pay a $5 admin fee, and then $12.99 is the discounted monthly fee to access that. There is also Adobe Acrobat 11 Pro for Windows, which is an installed desktop product. And there is the Mac version of that same product. And so this is a one-time fee that you would pay to TechSoup. That's the admin fee for that. There is also Adobe Creative Cloud All Apps, which gets you access to everything from uh, Adobe Acrobat Pro DC to your Photoshop, Dreamweaver, InDesign, Illustrator. I can't even list off all of the products that are included in it. A huge bundle of products that you can access for the $19.99 monthly fee for the first year. That's about a 60% discount I believe for the first year, and that goes to a 40% discount for subsequent years. Anyway, we'll talk more about that later on, but I wanted to make sure that people knew where they could look for more information on that uh, for the, the different Adobe donation program options. And then also this great resource that we have on our site in learning how to choose the right app for what you're trying to create. Because I just mentioned all of those products, we know people have a hard time distinguishing, should I be creating this with, um, with Dreamweaver, or is this something I should create with Illustrator, or do I just use Photoshop for it, or do I need a combination of a bunch of different things? This little Choose Your Own Adventure tool here lets you click on what you're trying to create, and then gives you advice through answering some questions quickly on what the right tool is. So it's a great resource for you. All right. Adobe Acrobat, we want to know what you are using currently. If you are using it at all, we want to know if you are currently using the Document Cloud or, or DC version of Acrobat. If you are using 11, which is that installed version that I just mentioned. If you are using version 10 or maybe something like 9 or lower, or perhaps you are not using it at all and you are considering trying to use Acrobat. This is just to help give us an idea of where you are at with this product if you already have you know, experience using it, or if you are coming to it brand new. And I'll give just a few more seconds to let everybody have a moment to participate. You can click on the radio button on your screen. I see people commenting in the chat that they are not using it. Uh, some people are saying that they are using Acrobat CC, which is the, the DC version of that. So, uh, it is the Document Cloud as part of Creative Cloud. So I'm going to go ahead and skip to the results because most people have had the chance to vote and show that it looks like almost 36% of our audience is using uh, Acrobat 11, which is the last of the desktop versions. Uh, so that's great. You're you're using what is before the Creative Cloud started, that's like the most recent version. So that's great, especially for you know, budget-strapped nonprofits and libraries. Uh, and almost 30% of you are already using the Document Cloud too, which is really great. And then one other question for you, what do you use Acrobat for? And feel free to choose all that apply to you. Do you use it primarily just for making PDFs? Are you using it to create forms that can be filled out and completed online? Are you using it to create editable, searchable documents? Are you using it to edit your documents? Combining files. I use it to combine uh, receipts a lot so that I can just scan them all and hand them off to finance to get reimbursed, get my monies back. Uh, are you using it to organize your documents or files? Are you using the e-signature features to be able to sign your documents? Or are you using some of those security features to help protect your documents? If there's something else you're using it for, feel free to chat in the window and let me know. And I will give again just a couple of seconds. Uh, I have 
Jean commenting in the chat that this is her wish list, that she's not using it now, but that she'd love to be able to do these things with it. So hopefully we'll point you to the resources to get you started. I'm going to go ahead and skip to the results, and then we will get into hearing from Jim, our expert for today. So again, the great majority of us are using Acrobat for making PDFs. No, no big surprise there. Um, but then 64% are using it to combine multiple files. 60% are using it to create forms that are fillable. Uh, so great. And then there's some of some folks that are or some features that are not being used as much. So hopefully we'll have time to talk about some of the things that maybe you didn't know it can do and get you on your way to using it. With that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Jim Babbage, our senior solutions consultant for the education program from Adobe, who's going to walk us through what are those things that Adobe Document Cloud can do for us, Adobe Pro DC. What can it do for us that we may not be aware of? Thanks for joining us today, Jim. Thank you, and thanks for the, the introduction. And uh, thank you everyone uh, for joining today. It's really exciting to have a chance to talk to you about Acrobat. And uh, one of the things I always think about with Acrobat is that sometimes it's hard to put together a presentation for Acrobat, not because of the reasons you might think, but because there's just so many different things it does and that often people don't realize it's capable of doing. Uh, and we're hopefully going to uh, give you an example of some of those things in today's webinar. So I'm just going to go – I have a slide deck that you'll have access to as well. I may not go through each individual slide because I want to show you stuff. But there's, this is sort of a general agenda of what we're going to be looking at. I have resources at the end of the slide deck, so links to learn more about uh, various aspects of Acrobat. And we'll do a demo as I mentioned. Um, Acrobat and Acrobat Document Cloud are part of Adobe's sort of three-pronged approach to communications and document management. Uh, Acrobat Document Cloud is one we'll focus on today, but there's also Creative Cloud, which uh, Becky has mentioned, and also Adobe Marketing Cloud, which is more for, in terms of web optimization, search engines, campaigning, all those kinds of things that you want to do to, to make a more intelligent, more responsive, more personalized experience online. Now, with our focus today, we're talking about really the benefits of Acrobat DC. And there's a lot of different things. Hopefully you'll see some of this today in my, in my presentation. But these are just some of the, the sort of the bullet points uh, around Acrobat. The ability to increase productivity and improve collaboration among people. Streamlining workflow processes, especially from a document management perspective. And also um, having improved document security and control over those documents. I'll give you an example here. Does any of this look familiar? <laughs> we've got all sorts of paper-based processes here. We've got a form that was filled out. Maybe it was emailed to someone. Then it had to be printed. Then it had to be filled out. Then it had to be scanned and emailed. And just that, all those steps uh, are part of a, a process that where a lot of things can, can break down. People forget to sign a document. They forget to send it. Um, and so that can be a challenge in itself. Uh, being able to work with documents intelligently, taking, for example, a photograph of something, a piece of paper, uh, a page from a textbook, for example, and then being able to sort of generate that into an intelligent document where you can actually edit the text, where you can collaborate with other people to improve on the content that's inside of that document. And also from the standpoint of increasing accessibility, which is really important in education as well as uh, governmental institutions and so on. A couple little uh, bits of statistics to share with you guys. Um, I mean, Acrobat and PDF has exploded over years. Uh, Adobe is the original creator of the PDF format, and these are just some of the numbers I can share with you. There's over 400,000 mobile installs per day of Adobe Reader, and I saw a few people in the comments mentioning uh, that they were working with Adobe Reader primarily. Over 100 million documents are electronically signed and processed and over 50 billion PDFs are opened in Adobe products alone just in this past year. Well, say 2016, not, not 2017 just yet. But despite all this, there is this challenge with uh, documents and workflows, what we call a document disconnect. 80% of document-based processes are still at least partly based on paper, which can lead to inefficiencies, to tracking problems, to auditing issues. Um, and just getting content back or getting information back in a timely manner. 63% of document processes negatively impact customer satisfaction. And I run into this every time I have to sign something 
from uh, it gets sent to me from a business where I have to fill in some information and sign my name, and it's a static document that I eventually, you know, might have to have normally had to print out, fill out, and as I mentioned earlier, scan and fax back. Uh, I can really speed up that process using Acrobat. And another interesting uh, statistic here, over 60% of people would change their jobs if it meant reducing administrative tasks, right? Because it's that, that's that drudge work that needs to get done, but it's, it's not exciting and it's, it really gets in the way of, of your process. Now, some of these slides are a little more focused on education, but you can think sort of broader in terms of a general business use. Um, the fact that we can, you know, we still haven't got that paperless office yet, but we can uh, incorporate tools like Acrobat to create um, onboarding packages or agreements, uh, working with vendors, things along those lines. Right now, a lot of that information, HR forms, it's all paper-based. It's in a filing cabinet somewhere. And just think about having to find a document that's a paper document that was filed a year ago. Can you find the right filing cabinet? Is it in the right place? And so on. And one last little a bit of information here about this whole document disconnect. It's a little statistic. Every day, 200 million pieces of paper are filed away in filing cabinets. That sort of falls back on my last date. Some of the areas where this really reduces productivity and efficiency, uh, paper-based workflows tend to be uh, significantly slower. Uh, legal and compliance risks are also a risk because really when you have a signed document, unless it's been witnessed by somebody and you know exactly who signed it, there's no real guarantee that you know that that is that person's signature. Poor data integrity, paper fades, fake signatures fade. Uh, documents aren't searchable, right? Um, uh, short of trying to find it in the filing cabinet. Yeah, the actual document itself, you can't find specific elements in it without reading through the whole thing. They're not accessible, right? Uh, in terms of the fact that if you're working with uh, uh, vision impairments or anything along those lines, uh, a paper-based document is not going to be much use to you. And cost, just the sheer cost of paper alone uh, is significant. But you think about ink, storage, uh, the, the cabinets you actually have to put these documents into, it all ends up. And what it all really comes down to is essentially a productivity drain. Right? You're having to shuffle paper, literally. That's a pretty much a colloquial term these days, to get your job done. Now when we talk about Acrobat and Acrobat Document Cloud, we've got a lot of capabilities here, and some of them are listed right here. Creation and editing and reusing of documents, signing and approvals, protecting documents, uh, publishing documents, sharing that uh, information as well. Uh, and whether that's using the Acrobat Reader or Acrobat itself, the desktop tool or Acrobat Mobile or web browsers, we're all sort of tied in there. And we've also got an enterprise level solution for this uh, as well, and, and also APIs that tie into enterprise solutions like Salesforce, uh, Ariba, and so on. So that's really what we're coming down to. The focus of what we're doing is we've really kind of reimagined Acrobat uh, DC to make it a tool that's more user friendly. Uh, to make a, an experience that's very similar across devices. And that's the other key thing here is that one of the big things that changed between Acrobat 11 and Acrobat uh, DC is that mobile has exploded. People are using their phones and their tablets far more often to get things done. Um, and Acrobat DC uh, provides that kind of similar experience whether you're on the laptop, whether you're on your phone, whether you're on your tablet. We'll see some of that today as well. And just a bit more detail there about the mobile app itself. We'll get a taste of this today. But it's very similar to the desktop app. Um, you can do a significant amount of editing. You can actually use your camera to turn it into a portable scanner. Um, so there's quite a few different things that are capable within the app itself. It's not just an app to read a PDF file anymore. And we'll see some of that today. Okay, so uh, we're going to move into the demo. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And Let's see, there we go. Okay. And let us know in the chat sure. if, if it doesn't show up well or if, if things are not rendering for you just so we can <clears throat> slow things down if we need to. But uh, we'll be watching the chat. Jim won't be able to see it while he's sharing his desktop. So let us right. know so we can let him know. Okay, thanks. Okay, that's great. So 
We're in Acrobat Pro DC right now, and I've got a few documents open. But before I get into the documents themselves, I just want to show a couple elements, sort of the interface, that there, that there have been significant changes to the way Acrobat DC works. And I believe they are changes for the better. We're starting off right from the home screen, the ability to access your files quickly. And not just from your desktop. And this is that concept I mentioned earlier about working with mobile, working with the cloud. I have access to my documents that may be on my computer. They may be shared in Document Cloud. Uh, they may be shared in Creative Cloud, or even Dropbox, or possibly even SharePoint if I have access to a SharePoint account. So you'll see over actually here in the main interface, some of these files actually have a little cloud icon beside them. That means these files have been saved to Document Cloud. And the beauty of this is that as soon as I do this, that file is available on any of my devices, my, my phone, my tablet. As long as I'm signed in uh, to, uh, to Document Cloud through the Adobe Reader, I'll have access to these same files. So I don't have to worry about, did I remember to print it? Do I have to crack open my laptop to work on the file? I don't have to do that. It's there. Now the other big change uh, is the tools. Uh, and not so much in, in what they do in many cases, but in the discoverability of them. One of the things we learned with Acrobat 11 and 10 and so on prior to that was that um, while Acrobat could do a lot, a lot of people didn't realize what it could do because a lot of the functionality was buried with inside of menus or panels. So we've done a, tried to work really hard to expose all of those tools, all of that functionality, and make it really easy to find those tools. So I have basically in the tools section, all the different things that Acrobat can do. And over on the right-hand side, I have essentially a taskbar with all sort of the most common things that most people will do. Now, they may not be the most common things that you do, but that's okay because I can go into this tools section, and if I find something that I know I'm going to use a lot, or oh, let's say optimizing a PDF for reading on the screen, um, I can take that action, and I can drag it over and drop it. And I can even reposition it somewhere else in the hierarchy if it's something I do all the time, for example. Now, not only can I do that in the Tools section, but if I'm working with um, a document that's open, in this case this PowerPoint file, or it was a PowerPoint file, it's now a PDF file, uh, and I want to do something with this specifically, I'm not really sure what I want to do, I can go ahead and search. Right? So I can just type in Edit. And I'll be given all the different options where editing is available, from, from editing the PDF itself, preparing a form, uh, to recognizing text, and so on. So I can get at uh, what I want to do much more quickly without having to think about how many menus do I have to click through to get to what I want, and where was that again? I can't seem to remember. So the search functionality here for actually working with Acrobat is significantly uh, more improved. and makes it a lot easier to work with. So as I mentioned, in this case, I've got a PDF that's open. And you know, it's completely editable. And this is something a lot of people don't realize you can do, is I can actually go and select an option to edit this PDF. And I can realize, you know what, actually, if I go back to the top there, um, this gentleman's name is not Anderson, it's Anderson. And I can make quick edits like that. I can even add in additional information. And I'll type in Associate Dean here. And I'll learn to spell better as I go. And I can reflow that text with inside that area. And notice it's retaining the font style. Uh, it's retaining the integrity of, of the design. If I go down for a little lower here, for example, into an area uh, that's maybe bullet points like this, I can decide, you know what, there's another bit of information I need to add in here. And I can just go ahead and type. And notice that um, the bullet point actually shows up as well. So I'm sort of structuring that kind of content uh, and giving myself the ability to edit the document further while I'm actually working inside of it. Now, interestingly enough, or um, I think it's interesting anyway, is that not only can I do this here on the desktop where you might probably expect to be able to do this kind of thing, if I go to my tablet, for example, here's the same document that you might have remembered that this particular file had a little cloud icon beside it when I was in the home area uh, for Acrobat. Uh, that means that this item is also available on my tablet or on my phone. And you're right now seeing my iPad. So I'm just going to go and sort of view this a little bit differently. And I'll just like that show. Wonderful screen. There we go. 
So there's my, talk, my, my tablet. I'm just going to scroll through here. You can see I can move through this. And very much like I can inside of Acrobat on the desktop, uh, that same kind of experience is inside of Acrobat Reader. Same kind of icons, the same kind of functionality is here. So there's my option for Edit PDF. I just tap that. I get the same look and feel. And I can go ahead and go into, say, Objectives here, for example. And I can edit that. I can go down to any of the other elements that are part of this document and make additional changes, whether that's moving it, whether that's changing the text, and so on. And when I save this back, it will end up being updated inside of Acrobat Document Cloud, which means I'll have the most current version also on my desktop when I reopen the file. So it gives me a lot of flexibility in terms of what I want to do. Okay. And I'll just hop back over to Acrobat here. So the interface itself, like I said, has been changed. It's been streamlined. It's been made a little more, I think, user-friendly uh, to discover information or discover functionality you may not have realized was there in the first place. Um, but there's a lot of other elements to working with Acrobat that people don't realize. And uh, some of those, actually some people did in the survey. I noticed that. But I want to mention a couple of these different ones. One of them is the ability to combine files. Now, I think the strength here is that what, you've got to, what you want to recognize is when I talk about combining files, I'm not talking about just combining other PDFs into one PDF. If I go to File, choose Create, and I choose Combine Files into a single PDF, I'm going to choose to add some files. I could also drag and drop them if I wanted to. And I'm going to grab this Word document. I'll grab this uh, Syllabus, and I'll grab this PowerPoint presentation. And I'll add those files. So there they are. And when I click on Combine, actually it's a goal you can see um, Microsoft Office working in the background talking back and forth to Acrobat. It's actually converting all those files over. And there are the three different files. So right now I'm still in my decision stage. I may decide I want to reorder these files and change the, the structure of them. So I could grab, say, the syllabus. And I could just take it and reposition it and move what was the PowerPoint presentation a little further into the package. I can also organize the content inside each of these documents, which is really, really quite impressive. I just double tap. And there's all the information that's part of that syllabus. And if I know there's something in there I don't need to uh, work with anymore, I can select that page. And you can see I can zoom in on it just to double check. Or I can go ahead and delete it. So I've got a lot of control here over the contents that I'm bringing in. And like I said, two of these were not even uh, uh, PDF files to begin with. So that kind of control is, is quite handy. And when I choose Combine, it's going to take all three of those different files, combine them into one PDF. And here we go. And there it is. I can rename this. It's the default names are Binder. So I can re save this with a different file name, and I can share this back to Document Cloud or send it by email or whatever I want. But the benefit of this is that I've taken multiple documents, maybe part of a project, a fundraiser for example, uh, and put them all in one package. So when I send this out to a potential sponsor, for example, uh, I'm not worried about them uh, missing a document, not opening a file. One of the things I, I often forget when I receive an email from someone who sent me attachments is sometimes there's maybe three or four or five attachments there, and I forget the other ones are there because they're not quite visible. So if I've combined all this into one file, I can send the one file off. I know that my sponsor or my, my uh, potential new hire uh, has got all the information they need in that one file, uh, and they can read through it. So I think that's really important and really powerful. As a teacher, this is also really beneficial because when I was supplying um, information to students about assignments and projects, same kind of thing. Without fail, if I supplied multiple documents for a student for an assignment, the one document they never read was the one that told them when the assignment was due. <laughs> so if I put it all together, um, then they have all the information they need to succeed, and I can uh, be confident that they uh, will, if they want to, complete the assignment in the appropriate amount of time. So lots of capability there to be able to do that kind of thing. Now while we're in this file, I mentioned a little earlier about editing. And editing is not just about editing text. And you see this image, this uh, particular file here has imagery in it. There's a photograph of the moon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose Edit PDF again. I'm going to select the moon. 
Now, if you take a look over on the right-hand side, you'll see lots of options here for editing. And one of the ones in the objects area gives me the ability to replace one image with another. So I can go ahead and check, select that option and grab a different image that I think may be more suitable and drop it into place, just like that. And it fits the same uh, width dimensions, so it doesn't break up the layout or anything like that. So that in itself is pretty cool. You know, I've got a fair amount of control over working with the document even after the fact. All right. Now I'm going to hop back over to the brain here for one more thing. We've seen how I can bring documents, Word documents, PowerPoint files, uh, into, uh, into Acrobat and convert them into a, a PDF file. But the other thing to keep in mind is you can also go the other direction. This is something not everybody realizes you can do. So I've got this file here, again, the, this sort of dissertation on the brain. And what I can do with this as well as um, uh, convert it to a PDF, I can take that final PDF maybe that needs more massaging and more editing than I can do inside of Acrobat, and I can go and choose to export this out uh, as a Microsoft Word document, as a spreadsheet, PowerPoint presentation, or even an image. So if I choose PowerPoint, it will give me the option here to save this out. And I'm just going to call this Brain Intro 2 so I don't overwrite anything that I've already got. And what I might do is I might just throw this on my desktop just so it's easy to find. And I'll save that. And now if I hop back over, okay, it's doing all the work. I didn't even have to go over to PowerPoint. It was already open. And there is that what was a PowerPoint presentation, sorry, a PDF file converted to a PowerPoint presentation. And if I go in, uh, all the content is editable. So that in itself also is a really handy way to deal with files. PDFs are great. Sometimes people want to, uh, the content in a different format because they're using it in their own presentation. So very, very handy from that perspective. So we've looked at a few different things that sort of help with productivity in that sense. But I also want to touch on some of the other sort of functional elements. Again, thinking about mobile and, and how people are doing things these days. Um, you know, maybe I'm working with a colleague and we're putting together, uh, sort of revamping maybe an article. We're using maybe was a printed piece. Maybe it's going to become a blog post. Uh, maybe we're sharing it uh, with donors because it's an update to uh, a fundraising campaign, whatever it happens to be. Now, for whatever reason, I'm, I'm joining my colleague at the coffee shop. I don't have an electronic version of the content, but they've got the, the printed piece right there in front of them. And this, this is an example here. I took this photo with my phone, and it looks like I took it with my phone. Right? You can see the lighting is not all that great. And it's just a file right now. It started off as, a, as, a, as, a, as a, a JPEG image on my smartphone. I've opened it up in Acrobat. So it's now a PDF, but it's still kind of a dumb PDF. It's just a file, essentially a picture. So what I want to do is I want to enhance this. I want to make this more useful, more intelligent. So I'm going to start by going over to my toolbar here. And I can look down and I can see there's enhanced scans. If I tap that, I get all the controls I need and, and just the controls I need uh, focused on enhancing an image or enhancing a scan. And that's the other nice thing about the interface is it really focuses you on your task rather than giving you so many options you're not sure where to begin. So in my case here, I'm going to choose Enhance. And this is a camera image. And I'm just going to let uh, Acrobat start its work. And you can see it automatically kind of recognizes part of the document. And I can control this. Because you notice I didn't take this image at the perfect angle. And the other thing is it's paper. So it's kind of, it's not very, uh, very straight. Right? It's all part of, a, part of a magazine in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and drag these control handles. And I can do this, by the way, on my mobile device as well. So it's kind of exciting. We've got the capability there as well. Once I get the look and feel that I want, I just go ahead and choose Enhance Page. And it's going to go ahead and recognize that information and make it a much more readable document. Now, I can further tweak that by adjusting the enhancement level. You see Acrobat working in the background here. And really cleaning that up so it's very easy to read from a visual perspective. Uh, that makes that much more handy, definitely. But the other thing too is that even though it's cleaned up, it's still basically just a document. So the other thing I'd like to do with this is recognize the text. So I can choose recognize text in this file. And just go ahead and choose recognize. 
and it will take a minute as it goes through all the content. And while it doesn't seem to have changed very much, now that I have this, if I choose to find something, let's see, oh, I'm going to go and look for genetic. Oops, I'm going to spell it right too. That would be helpful. There we go. And I'll just hit the return key. And you can see it starts to pull up the first instance where genetic shows up. I click on Next. So we're not just looking at a flat document anymore or a JPEG file or a photograph. We're looking at a doc document with some intelligence behind it. We can actually find a text with inside that document, even text with inside, for example, these figures. So if I go ahead and change my search to combination, it's going to start looking for that as well so I can continue through that process. So very, very handy from that perspective. Now, tying in with that, we talked a little bit about accessibility. I just want to bring this up as well here. And I'm just going to go over to my View Options. And you see I've got options here to read out loud. So I can activate this. And I can actually read out loud content from the document itself. You're not going to hear it too well at the moment. But, um, but basically I've got that capability to essentially read content out. And that makes it that much more of a powerful document, uh, that much more uh, of a useful document. And this information, this content, once I save the file, it travels with the file. So I don't have to do this all over again if I've received the PDF file. All that information is ready and there for me to use. Now on top of that, on top of the fact that I've made this an easier to read document, a more accessible document, I maybe want to use this as a starting point for our discussion with my colleague about the blog post. So what I might also want to do, I'm just going to close off my enhance options here, is I may want to add some comments. So you can see here, there's my commenting features. So I can just choose that. And again, all my controls come up along the top. I can highlight text. So I just tap the highlighter bar, and I can go ahead and highlight information. I can go ahead and add uh, comment boxes or sticky notes, and I can contextually place these where it's important. A lot of times when you get feedback from a document, you still have to read through the document to find out where, what they were talking about. Well, with a sticky note, I can stick this right wherever I need to go and fill in my information. So um, let's consider other terms for this. And you can see that not only am I putting that content in there, even when I close that, there's the little icon right there. We'll zoom in a bit so you can see it a bit better. But it's also showing up in my comments area. Right? So, and again, when I save this PDF uh, and I send it off to someone else to review, they will have access to all these comments and they can respond to them in kind. So it can be very, very useful uh, from that perspective. Now, another option that uh, is kind of handy, and we talked a little bit about this uh, in the initial uh, slide deck, was working with forms. Uh, this is the, <laughs> in many cases, the bane of many people's existence. Working with paper-based forms, or uh, almost as bad, are digital forms that have no intelligence behind them, right? That are just a form you have to print out because you can't fill it out uh, on your computer or on your mobile device. So very much like that. I've got an example here. This is a pretty good example of sort of a typical form, the kind of thing you'll get from insurance companies or health professionals or real estate companies, things like that. And right now, this is not a fillable form at all. This is strictly just a static form. So again, we've got options over here on the right-hand side. This one, in this case, prepare form. And I want you to pay attention to what happens here because this happens very quickly once I start this process. I'm just going to tap the Start button. And in less time than I can say it, Acrobat has recognized all the relevant form fields in this document and basically made them live and editable form fields, right down to, by the way, a signature field. How long did that take? Right? It's, it's incredibly fast. So from here, I can then save this document, and I can fill it out myself, and then send it back uh, to the organization uh, by email without having to have printed it out, filled it in, printed another copy because I made a mistake because that happens, 
and then printed another copy because my penmanship is so terrible and I had to print it again to actually make it readable. And then finally scan it and send it back to the, to the company involved. I've actually done this for myself and created a very easy way to make this a fillable form. Now, the company who created the form could do this as well and make it much easier on the end user and their experience uh, of filling out that form and saving them time and essentially speeding up the process. One of the big challenges with forms is that because you have this sort of latency of, um, of steps of printing, filling out, scanning, emailing, um, other stuff gets in the way, something called life usually, <laughs> and you forget to do something. You forget to print it out, or you print it out and you forget to fill it out because it's under a bunch of other paper in your office. Because this is actually part of that document, uh, I speed up that process and then significantly improve the response time, in many cases the accuracy of the document because it's much more legible because I'm typing in the information, and it's much easier for the end user to fill out because they don't have to do all those other steps. So really, really handy from that perspective. Now another option for this is something um, that I find really useful uh, as well, and it's uh, what I refer to it as fill and sign. And I'm just going to pull up another document here. This is a could be, in this case, it's a high school, it's a field trip waiver kind of thing, but it could be anything where a document's been sent, uh, again, a static document like this, uh, and I rushed out the door, that's in my email, uh, haven't had a chance to fill it out, haven't had a chance to print it out, never mind. Um, and what I want to do is actually get this thing taken care of very quickly. So we saw that option there where as a company I might want to create a fillable form to make it easier for my end user. Uh, another option here is from the standpoint of an individual, myself who's received the form, I've got options to actually uh, fill out the form myself, whether it's in terms of uh, being on my desktop or and I'll just switch back over to my uh, iPad here. Bear with me for a second. There we go. And let's go back out here. And you can see, by the way, I can find uh, very much the same kind of content. This is all the different files I've, I can access. There's that form again, that permission slip. So I've opened it up here inside of Acrobat. And if I tap on my options here, you'll see an option called Fill and Sign. Now if I tap that, it actually opens up another dedicated mobile app we've created called Fill and Sign. And what this does for me is it gives me the ability to actually start filling out information. Now I can do this in a couple different ways. Notice as soon as I tap inside in the document, I get a text field. I can reposition that for where I want. Or if I've had the foresight to do it, I've actually got all my profile information right here. So for example, there's Jim Babbage, my full name. I can just take that and drag that and pop it where it needs to go. I can even change the color and the font, the size and so on, and I can keep going. Or if I don't have that information in my profile, for example, in this case a parent and guardian, I'll just go in here and I'll type in. And I can continue on that process filling out the form and there we go. I'm just going to get rid of my keyboard there. And eventually, once I'm done, I can even go ahead and choose to sign that form. There's my signature. I've just already sort of scribbled that in as a signature, and I can just go ahead and place that. And again, I can put it wherever I want. I can scale down the size of it so it's a little more suitable. And let's just drop that right there. And then when I'm ready to go, I've got options to send this off by email. Um, I can send it off in a variety of different ways right from my tablet. So I don't even have to be at home at my computer to get this kind of content um, filled out and submitted back to a company, um, school, fundraiser, whatever it happens to be. It's really quite, quite ingenious how they've made this work so easily. Okay, so let me see what else have I got going on here. All right, I'm going to hop back over to Acrobat. And uh, we've looked at our medical forms. We've looked at the textbook. Uh, and let's just take a quick peek at my timing. Actually, I am in pretty good shape here. It looks like I am almost ready to uh, sort of uh, uh, just come to the end of my sort of demo piece. I want to hop back over to my uh, slide deck. I want to just follow up on a couple things. And let me just stop sharing. Oops, there we go. So that gives you some ideas, and that's just a, that's sort of scratching the surface of what Acrobat's capable of, and just to sort of give you a 
sort of a sort of a recap on this. Um, oops, there we go. You know, these are some of the things we looked at. The ability to be anywhere, and I think that's key. These days, everybody's life is moving far too fast. We're always busy. We're always doing something. We're always on the go. We're not always at a desk. So being able to work, um, to do these productivity things wherever you are, whatever device you have handy is really, really important. Uh, being able to edit and customize existing documents, uh, standardizing those processes so that you can streamline that flow like the forms that we saw. Uh, being able to sign documents or send them, another really, uh, really beneficial advantage. And then just sort of managing uh, some of those workflows, being able to track. We didn't quite get into that, but I have some resources for you on those kinds of things. But if I send a document out, whether it's a form or a file, I can track that document so I know who's, uh, that it was sent out and whether that person's received it. I get notifications that the file has been received. I did that with Becky yesterday, actually, when I sent the, this uh, PowerPoint demonstration to her. Uh, that's how I knew that she got it. So just a couple wrap-up things here, sort of, again, sort of following along. We tried to sort of uh, pick up Acrobat and, and really retool it to make it uh, far more user-friendly, make it as seamless as possible. You've got sort of the best of everything uh, from the people who made the PDF format to begin with. Um, and the ability to sort of control your digital document workflows uh, efficiently, securely, um, and essentially from anywhere. I think of the key things to think about. I mentioned as well, you'll get this uh, PowerPoint presentation. Uh, here are some links. There's so much to learn about Acrobat. And these are some of the links that I found really helpful from just general FAQs to our community-driven areas like the Acrobat Library, uh, our learn and support, where we've got a whole bunch of videos um, that we can actually share, that we share with the public as well on how to do certain things inside of Acrobat. Uh, lots of great information there uh, that can really sort of round out your experience and get you sort of up and running with Acrobat DC really quickly, and uh, and you know making that uh, process and that experience that much more enjoyable and more productive. Wow. My mind is actually blown right now. Some of the stuff you showed, I was like, how, how, do they, how does it make the curved sheet of paper go flat and iron out all the little gray from the yeah. text to make it? I was like, what? I was seriously mind blown. And I'm, I'm on an older version, so I'm going to have to go talk to our IT people after this and make them give me an upgrade because, wow, <laughs> thank you so much. That was really no uh, amazing. We had people in the chat saying the same thing. So a lot of great features that I'm really actually totally geeking out to on behind the scenes. We were like, oh, we want this. Um, <laughs> So thank you for that. And uh, these resources are available to folks on screen. You, even though these are not clickable to you right now, you will get them. You may have already received this uh, slide deck. But before we get into the Q&A, which I know we have a lot of questions uh, coming in, we have had a lot of questions throughout the webinar on which of the features are available in Acrobat Pro DC versus which are available in Acrobat 11, which a lot of people have. You know, it was like 35% have 11, 30% have Acrobat Pro DC. So we know that our audience is in various uh, versions of this program. Do you know offhand with some of the things that you featured, which are exclusive to Acrobat Pro DC, or are they all exclusive to that, or are they just easier to find, or how does it work? Well, Do you have some a, of them were in Acrobat program? 11. Sorry. Uh, some of them were in Acrobat 11. I, it's been so long since I've used Acrobat 11, I'd have to actually go through my notes. I could probably find a comparison chart for people. Uh, some of it was there, but what, even what was in Acrobat 11 is now far more discoverable and easy to find uh, in Acrobat DC. And that's one of the things I've often found when I've shown uh, Acrobat to a group of uh, staff or faculty or anybody, is that they didn't realize all that power was there because it was buried so deep in a panel or in a menu that they just never even thought um, to go looking. And they ended up using two or three different tools for, uh, to solve their problems that they could have all solved inside of Acrobat. But a lot of the optimization features with, uh, with documents and the mobile side of things, very new uh, uh, to Acrobat DC uh, as opposed to Acrobat 11. The experience is significantly richer uh, and better and more seamless. 
That is super helpful. And yeah, I have 11 and I didn't know that some of those things could be done potentially on 11 too. So that's really amazing. Um, I highlight this link which is really long. So thank you to Susan for chatting it out to the audience because this is a blog post that one of our colleagues Excellent. here at TechSoup has written that does do some comparison, what features are in common between the two, which things are unique to Acrobat Pro DC which are available in 11. So you can go through that blog post and really see what the benefits are of each. So if you have specific questions in that regard, that might be the place to start. For those of you looking to get uh, Adobe, and either you don't have it or you want to upgrade or you want to get that subscription to Acrobat Pro DC, you can go to TechSoup.org if you're here in the United States. You can go to that Get Products and Services tab, click on Buy Donor or Provider, so you browse through the catalog and go to Adobe. You can also get there just by going TechSoup.org slash Adobe. Once you're on this page, you'll be able to see the variety of products available in the donation program. There are some that are uh, traditional donations and there are some that are the discounted membership subscriptions for the annual subscription like I mentioned earlier. And I showed this slide earlier in the program and you can get to the specific products. If you really think, hey, you really want access to Photoshop and Adobe Premiere and you're going to do video stuff and, and you're going to design collateral and you want Acrobat, um, you really should look at this All Applications Bundle. It is the best deal of the bunch. Um, and if you just want to have access to Acrobat Pro DC, you can get that. If you just want the installed version of the software on your computer to use locally, these are the links for those for uh, PC and Mac. We also have a page where you can um, learn about the Adobe program in general, and we've got lots of resources that highlight the different products available and cute little videos from our coworkers that you can check out, and some additional resources on um, on Adobe Acrobat. So there's that blog post that I already mentioned, uh, five uses for Adobe Acrobat Pro DC. And then there's the version comparison on Adobe's site and the pricing comparison. Keep in mind that this isn't reflecting the pricing through TechSoup. But it does give you um, a chart that checks off the features available in each of the versions. So I would definitely re recommend checking those out if you're trying to decide what's best for your needs. So with that, we have a lot of questions. Um, one of the questions, uh, we had a whole bunch of people who were excited about the signature features mm -hmm. and how to create the signature and how to do it with the date stamp. Is it possible for you to show us where you did that? Um, the, well, I can go through a bit of it. The, uh, one of the things I, I want to sort of differentiate, the sample I was showing was um, a sort of a quick and easy way to sign a file, meaning that I've, I've received the email or I've received the document and I know I'm signing it. I think of it like um, uh, the equivalent of, say, a faxing a signed document, right? You, it, there's not the same level of security or awareness or proof of identity with that kind of signature. It still, it still could, could, could be valid, but we have a whole other solution called Adobe Sign that is very secure and has full auditing and tracking control um, for electronic signatures and is a legally binding uh, signature. Uh, solution, and that's not really part of Acrobat per se. Uh, it is tied into Acrobat, uh, but it's not a part of the, the Acrobat DC solution. What I showed you was just uh, what comes with the software. Um, and let me see if I can pull something up here. So let's go back to QuickTime. And okay, and we aren't seeing your desktop yet, so you will need to oh, share that's your right. screen I again. Share. No, that's yeah. okay. Right that's back. okay. That's why I wanted to remind you. Yeah, we had a lot of people who went, ooh, signatures, um, and people adding questions on about signatures and whether people need to have, um, you know, a pen, a special, you know, pen right. pad for people to capture signatures in the first place and stuff like that. Yeah, and actually, no. The, the great thing is, um, I can do all this with my finger, right? So in the case of, of this example uh, that I've got here inside of Fill and Sign, um, let me just go back into that and go to Fill and Sign. And you know, one of the things I've got here, I filled out a lot of this persona information already. This is the kind of thing that you can do uh, at your leisure. You don't have to fill it out, but it just speeds up the process. And you can do this in that inside of Acrobat, or you can do it inside of the mobile app. So you really have the same kind of control. Uh, so I can edit this content if I want to um, and move it around. 
uh, you can see all the way down right down to uh, actual phone numbers and email addresses and so on. It's all there. Um, now, in the case of the signature, I'm just going to bring that up again. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that signature. Okay, because I mean, maybe I didn't like that one. It was kind of kind of sketchy. Uh, so I can once I delete that signature, I can go ahead and choose to create a new one, and I can do this uh, literally just with my finger here, not with a special stylus or pencil. You could use the stylus if you want, but I'm just going to go ahead and. If I like what I've got, I just tap done. And that signature is now there. And we saw I can scale it back and forth. And it's now recorded here as well for quick access. Right, so now we can all go and forge Tim's documents. Don't you there you go. There you go. <laughs> yes, I, I, have, I have a doctor's signature without a doctor's salary. So, uh, <laughs> but that's, that's, it's that easy to do. And, that's quite, and you can even set up, as you might have seen there, you can even create initials. So if you need to just sort of initial something in a contract, you can go ahead and do that. And then I can just drag that anywhere I want beside a certain clause. Uh, so very, very easy to do. Now I do want to mention as well, that, and I, I did touch on this, but just so we're clear, uh, I'm inside of um, Acrobat Reader here right now, the Adobe Reader. It's free. Uh, and you'll see that fill and sign is actually part of the menu. But don't forget that I actually ended up opening that file up in a different application, a mobile app called Fill and Sign. So if I try to sign, fill and sign a document inside of Reader, it's going to prompt me when I tap on Fill and Sign to download the Fill and Sign app. Again, also free so, uh, from the App Store or from Google Play. So, uh, but just be aware that there are two different apps that work there. Uh, when we're jumping from just editing and organizing um, a file or scanning inside of Acrobat Reader, Adobe Reader. Uh, to actually filling out the document, that's where that fill and sign doc, uh, application comes into play. Well, and that's a great segue, Jim, to a question that we got from a few people just asking, if I have this software on my computer and I want somebody else to fill out and return it to me, do they need to have access to the software or are they able to do it with the reader or another free application? Uh, it's an excellent question. The um, reader will do most of what people need to do. You know, I mean, you can, you can see the power that's there. Now, there are some things, like if I go back into that menu on my mobile app, uh, you'll see the Edit PDF option. That's something that's really only available if you have a, uh, a subscription or a, a membership, right, uh, to Document Cloud or to you've got the license. But all the other things, like commenting, organizing, um, those kind of things are still available. So there's quite a bit of power in in an app where you don't even need to worry about subscribing to anything. Uh, but when you want to get that level deeper and do things like edit the document itself and change text, uh, then it becomes something that would be part of a, um, an Adobe ID or a user subscription. That's really helpful. We had some questions about fillable forms, um, and one was you know, just asking, is there a way to force people to save it before they send it back to you? Because uh, one person mentioned uh, they, they send a lot of those forms to people and they get them back blank because people don't remember to save them before returning them. Um, <laughs> any idea on that? Is there a way to force people to change? That's a good question. <laughs> no. um, I, I don't know if there's a way to force it. There may, you may be able to put a workflow in place, but it's not sort of a default setting. Um, what is interesting to note though is that if you do apply a signature to a document, at that point, once that signature is applied and the document is saved, the document can no longer be altered, right? So uh, it remains, you know, a little more, a little more secure in that sense. But as far as forcing them to save before they send, I don't think that's an. I think the only way that might come up is if you try to close Acrobat. Uh, it'll probably prompt you, "Do you want to save this file with your changes?" Uh, but yeah, if they have just filled it out and then they're just going to Outlook and they're sending an email, they're actually picking up the document that hasn't been saved. So I don't think there's a way sort of out of the box to do that. I can look into it, but I don't know off the top of my head for sure. No problem. One other quick question about fillable forms. Are the fields expandable? Like if somebody's filling out the text and it goes beyond the space that you had originally put in there, will it automatically right. expand or do they run uh, out of space? That's a good question, and the answer is no. <laughs> uh, we do have um, more in-depth solutions through our, our enterprise products that create that kind of logic that will either show and hide fields depending on responses or allow you to create essentially expandable fields, but that's not part of Acrobat per se. 
No problem. Well, thank you for that. We are at the top of the hour, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. I know we didn't have time to get to everyone's question, but we do hope that we covered enough to pique your interest to go look at those links and additional resources and really discover which would be the best tool for your needs. We would appreciate it if those of you on the line still would chat in one thing that you learned during today's webinar that you're going to take back and implement or that's going to impact your decision making around which tool you'll use. Uh, we hope that you did learn a number of things that that you didn't know Adobe uh, Acrobat DC could do before. I know I sure did. We'd also like to ask that you share this information with your friends and colleagues who may benefit from it. Uh, this is free and open to share with whomever could use it. We'd like to also ask you to take a moment at the end to complete, complete the post-event survey that pops up when we end our webinar. If you're interested in more webinars and trainings from TechSoup, we have a new course platform, and I say new, but it's really a few months old, where you can access on-demand trainings at your convenience 24-7 at this link on the page at TechSoup.course.tc slash catalog. We'll show you the full catalog of our courses. And we do have some Adobe Photoshop and InDesign for Beginners courses in there now. So I would recommend if you're interested in the Adobe Suite to check those out. We also have a whole spate of upcoming webinars. Next Thursday we'll be talking about how to find and cultivate local technology expertise for your nonprofit or library. And then we'll have a series of webinars on grant writing. The first is to get to uh, look under the hood, so to speak, of GrantStation, which is a great grant uh, foundation and federal grant directory. And then we'll talk about Grant Writing 101, how to help you write those successful grants. Then on the first, we will talk specifically to museums and historical sites about ways that TechSoup can help their programs. And then we'll be talking about how to empower library staff to DIY some of their uh, tech management skills. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Thank you, Jim, really excellent oh, uh, content. You definitely blew my mind on a couple of them and make me uh, want to go over and put in a help desk ticket right now and go bug somebody to install it on my machine because it's great. Um, thank you to Terry, Susan, Caro, and Wes in the background for your help in answering questions. Thank you to all of you our participants, and thank you to ReadyTalk, our webinar sponsor, who provided the use of the platform. Uh, Take a moment to please complete that post-event survey that pops up when you close our window because we really do appreciate your feedback so we can continue to improve our programming. Thank you all. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thanks everyone.